Hi, everybody. Welcome to Friday. Um, let's talk a little bit about COVID first, and then we can talk about some other news. So, you know, expected uptick. It's very slow uptick. Um, you know, we're seeing less than a 1% increase over the last two weeks. Um, I think I mentioned that last week that um, FDA decided to push for inclusion of the new variant, the so-called FLIRT variant, into the updated vaccine in the fall. Mm -hmm. So again, if you were planning to get vaccine in the summer, you don't, right? Because you will be unprotected from the new variant and, and it makes no sense to me whatsoever. Uh, will they be in time for the vaccine in the fall? We'll, we'll yet to see, but that's the current hope. Okay, and then uh, the other update is, um, uh, you've heard me talk about MDMA getting or ecstasy getting approved for PTSD in on August 11th. That was official day, date that, my understanding it was already finished the approval process however it turns out that's not so easy i guess nothing is easy in this life and and janet just pointed out that that actually yesterday uh feds had an advisory meeting that rejected the mdma basically saying that the trial that was used for the study for ptsd by this company called like i think i'll white OS. uh was not good enough or they basically saying that the trial had problems so this all sounds like a political crap to me um it has nothing to do with one trial there's been over two dozens of clinical trials by now so why they grabbing onto a particular trial it is to me feels like there is some something we don't know that's basically happening and the news are just reporting whatever they told to, to report to the public um, also, the, the evaluation of the study, why they scrutinized, had nothing to do with reality. They saying there was severe side effects. It's all BS. So, uh, you know, why this is happening, we'll, we'll keep an eye on. And I, I guess we'll have to see what happens. But sounds like the chances of approval on August 11th, it just went down. It looks like they're not completely out of the window since this is the advisory panel. The, the feds can still say, OK, we're going to approve it no matter what that one trial uh, information was um but um, i guess yet to be seen so let's do q a you know the drill put the question in the chat if you rather say that your question out loud let me know and um so and if you're wondering where i'm sitting since this is not my usual thing is that i'm in montreal uh, tomorrow we're doing presentation at the nida national institute for drug abuse presentation on our work on cannabis as we've just finished our trial and we basically go into the uh, number one world journal called journal of academic medicine to try to publish the white paper and then mandate that every student in the united states and canada learn something about cannabis because there's no mandate right now basically school have a right to not teach at all if they choose to. In fact, there are actually uh, uh, several schools that refuse to teach on this topic, regardless of the fact that we know the drug has been, uh, the cannabis has been rescheduled or will be rescheduled in the upcoming months, most likely before the election. So that's what we're doing. We're educating our conservative colleagues about the topic. I'm actually quite excited that they have accepted the talk because I think um, it shows that there is definitely a global shift in perception over time, over this last year or so. So with that, let's see who has any questions before I'll pass to Anil. I heard earlier you were talking about psilocybin uh, as a medication for depression. Any news on that getting uh, uh, FDA approval? Oh, no, that will take decade plus. No, the, the, the problem is there is no single drug out of psilocybin, right? Because there's no, the, the pure psilocybin with which was studies were done is not commercially available. So it's not really clear how that's going to gain the actual regulatory path. Uh, cannabis being rescheduled because there are multiple medications that are basically pure cannabis. So Marinol is one, for example, that's already FDA approved. So there's a precedent for pharmaceuticals. 
ecstasy is a pure chemical so mdma is a pure chemical so you can uh, you can assure consistency but mushrooms cannot be because they're plants plants have no regulatory mechanism in fda that just doesn't exist you'll have to change entire regulatory market which is not possible in the united states of america that's very different from europe europe has a different path of approving uh, any herbal herbal or any botanical for that matter based on their regulatory statutes but we don't have them in us we, they don't exist and so there's no path by which so uh, you know magic mushrooms or peyotes or whatever will ever get any of the approval unless they're going to try to approve um, extracts so if they try to approve pure psilocybin yes there would be a potential for that but even that's going to be a little complicated because you can't approve you can't really assure consistency of batches that's the biggest problem. The biggest problem with FDA approval of any chemical is you have to show 85% consistency from batch A to batch B. If you cannot do that on a consistent basis, there's no pathway. It doesn't exist. So, but it's a good question. Um, so most likely what will happen is what happened with cannabis. That's what that's the path that psilocybin is on, which the states are going to gradually approve it. And then when we reach a certain critical mass, there's going to be some kind of conversation. So look how long it took for cannabis to reach that mass. That's about 25 years, give or take, since the first state starting to sort of approve the process. So give psilocybin a couple of decades, uh, probably already five to 10 years already passed. So we're probably about a decade and a half away, just FYI. All right, any other questions? Anybody have any questions about COVID? Seemingly the, the summer is taking a you know much better summer than the last year. Last year, this is when we had a spike already. And by now there's uptick, but as I mentioned, it's very small uptick. And, and so it may be we're going to completely avoid uh, kind of this mild summer spike that we had last year, which would be a welcomed, I think, um, very welcomed um difference from last year all right so somebody texted what is it? just a positive for COVID for the first time right do you have any symptoms Jacqueline or you if, if you're some completely asymptomatic that would be good no I had symptoms don't like a Mack truck hit me my body my head cool it's my head at all on Saturday um and then just slept. So you can hear right now, I'm still having some congestion, but I feel yeah. so much better after Saturday and Sunday. Well, that's good. Yeah, just make sure you take maximum support. Um, you know, we talked a lot about this on this in this meeting, uh, quercetin, vitamin C, zinc, whatever mm -hmm. you can, because you really want to minimize risk of long COVID. That's really the main concern. Absolutely. I was trying to find out about the Paxlovid, which the doctor wanted to prescribe and did, but it didn't arrive at the pharmacy until yesterday. So I just skipped it. Now. Yeah, just skip it, skip it, because yeah. it's too late by now. You've already had it for at least four or five days. It's probably useless at this point. And you're getting better, so I don't... Yes. It's going to do a whole lot. Yeah, the, the Paxlovid became a bit more of a... We talked about the social... Um, they haven't talked about this for many weeks, actually, that Paxlovid seems to be losing its potency over time, unfortunately. So we still prescribe it to some patients, but a lot more selectively compared to how it was before. So Jane is bringing up really interesting questions. So is MS mistaken for long COVID very often? Not really. Um, I mean, you, you, there are some cross uh, symptoms, but you know, MS is uh, typically very progressive. So long COVID can progress somewhat but mildly so versus the um you know the ms generally speaking is very specific neurologic but there could be overlap in symptoms so you definitely need to make sure that some trained professional tries to look at you and say okay is this ms or is this long covid so and by the way we've had situations when long covid was missed because long covid sometimes starts showing up weeks if not months after original um, symptoms passed. So patients would have an acute COVID, 
no symptoms for a couple of weeks or even a couple of months, and then suddenly symptoms come back. So that's very possible. I've seen this on several occasions. So that 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 also can complicate the issue even more. So, okay, did I miss the discussion about the fish? No, you did not. Again, I have not been. Alyssa, you out of everybody knows why I was busy. So we actually just applied for a million dollar grant from US, from DC government, trying to treat uh, patients with chronic pain. This is the DC opioid abatement program. So I hadn't had much time to prep for today. Sorry about that. I know, I, I promised that study, I will uh, cover it. <laughs> it's just taking me longer than I expect. I did mention that I, the study is a lot more complicated than I expected. So what Elise is bringing up, I talked about this a little bit last time, is that there's an interesting comprehensive analysis showing that patients who are healthy in, have increased risk of AFib with fish oil versus if you have a cardiovascular disease, AFib actually, uh, fish oil seems to be protective against complications of cardiovascular disease. So it's kind of a, an interesting dynamic there. So, all right. There was a really interesting article about scientific study linking EBV to MS. Yeah, that I'm sure that's true. Chronic viral infections are definitely going to increase risk of any long-term neurologic diseases. If you guys, uh, you know, my interest in Alzheimer's, so if you go on my YouTube, you'll find a very comprehensive analysis and review of the studies showing a very strong link of all kinds of viruses to risk of Alzheimer's disease, up to tenfold increase in risk of Alzheimer's disease with specific viruses. So you can take a look at that. That's pretty interesting. I don't know if there's a proof that you can treat that and decrease the risk, but of course, that's an anticipated uh, link. If, if, this, if this correlation is probably causation, I'm, I'm saying this with not 100% certainty since I don't have that 100% certainty, but you can probably reverse that. So yeah, so we all hope, Jack, and you get to recover very quickly. And then I'll answer this last question because we at 2.15. How can people protect themselves on public transportation in areas where there is or may be a ban on the masks? I have never heard that. There is a ban on masks in New York City? Really? Yeah, in New York in general. So there's been so many issues. Wow. I guess with crime mm. in the, the subways and whatever. And so Governor Hochul, Mayor Adams, they are all like supporting this idea of like, and it's like, this isn't the South people. This is up north. This isn't how it's supposed to be. Politics aside, how are people supposed to protect themselves? Well, I'm fortunate I work remotely, so I don't really have that issue, but like other people. Yeah, that's that's shocking to me <laughs> that, that somebody can ban masks because obviously mm -hmm. we have a lot of immune compromised people everywhere. Um, that can you do me a favor and send me a link to this? Let me research this. I don't know how to answer this because the okay. masks are the mainstream protection i mean i guess you can wear other protective gear but again if they're banning the masks i would presume they're banning everything else um including you know other complex devices like the respirators and all of that because there are still masks in essence wow well that's the first i've heard in a long time so yeah. all right well with that i'm sorry for finishing on a bad note here but we have Dr. Bichnath with us. And Neil, thank you so much for joining and uh, enlighten us with your with your talk for today. Thank you. And while I was teasing the Neil, but he is board certified in various things. And that's really what I meant to say. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you guys. I know that time is of the essence here and it's a true honor and pleasure to be with you all here today. You know, and um, I think um, some of the things I, I just want to take a moment to reflect on some of my more recent kind of um, kind of meditations here in regards to what's been, you know, within my locus of attention more recently and how it relates to health, wellness, and overall just, um, just, just vitality. And this concept of chronobiology and circadian rhythms, you know, comes to mind. And it's something that I'm hoping to unpack a little bit here with you guys today. And, you know, chronobiology essentially just refers to the, your, your natural biological rhythms and how that influences our overall well-being. 
And I think that for a lot of individuals, they we're all on different kind of schedules, sleep schedules, wake schedules, feeding schedules. And this all has a, a, an influence on how our immune system, our metabolism, and our bodies respond to, you know, just, just whatever signals and inputs that it's being fed. And I think it's very, one of those things that is very important to kind of dial in in regards to our natural synchronies and, and rhythms of life and, and you know, there, there's so many different things that in, in the healthcare space that we could entertain that could theoretically support, you know, um, you know, supplementing some of these different uh, kind of signals and inputs into our chronobiology. Um, you know, so I'll take a step back and say, you know, it, it's really important to look at, you know, um, all the different uh, cumulative exposures that we have within within life, you know, whether it's light, sound, food, music, exercise, whatever it is, and how that's actually influencing our gene expression. Because, you know, um, very interesting, um, you know, study and a Nobel Prize was actually given to a couple of American researchers a few years ago with mapping out, you know, how there are these different uh, peripheral clocks within our bodies and these different tissues that basically receive these different signals from the environment and influences everything from our immune system and again to our digestive health and to the way we recover in our in in our overall vitality. And you know, there's a concept called um Zeitgerbers or Zeitgerbers, which is a German term that re refers to these different peripheral cues that are in our environment that actually communicate with our DNA and influence various levels of gene expression. Again, I, I know I get a little technical. I'm sorry, I'm trying to keep it, you know, digestible here. Um, but I it's I think it's one of those things that we have within our locus of control, the ability to um you know, influence what we're being exposed to with simple, simple interventions. And how do we use this information of chronobiology and circadian rhythms to create and cultivate wellness? And I think that's going back to nature, right? And simple things like getting morning sunlight, you know, early morning sunlight. It's one of those very simple things that we could do that, you know, gives the body kind of that reset button. Right. And being able to be absorb those unique rays of light that have a direct impact on, you know, setting the the tone of the day and how our body is going to respond as we move towards um, throughout the day. And then also being cognizant of maybe getting too much light at nighttime. So light exposure is one of those simple things where early morning sunlight is one of the best things that you could do to help recalibrate recalibrate your system. And there's some anecdotal evidence that it helps with mood and um, other kind of um, neuropsychiatric based kind of um, uh, support. But also furthermore, you know, looking at the evening cycle is very important in regards to making sure that we're not having too much um, blue light and exposure to different light in the evening time, because that has a direct impact on our bodies to, you know, produce appropriate melatonin production and get into a deeper state of sleep and how that's going to help uh, influence hormonal rejuvenation. So, you know, being cognizant of these different light signals is something that's within, again, our locus of control. I think we're all kind of guilty with having some uh, exposure of cell phone and the blue light from the cell phones, you know, late in the evening time could be very stimulating to the nervous system and could actually disrupt some of our uh, abilities to to tap it to a deeper level of sleep. Um, so that's one thing I want to pay attention to is light. Another thing that I think is really important to pay attention to is, um, you know, I also, uh, is grounding, just getting connected to the earth, right? And, and having enough time to go out there and actually discharge into the earth. So, you know, stepping into the circle, this integrative circle, you know, I think everybody here is a little receptive to, you know, some of these different concepts, but, you know, there's this concept of um, the Schumann frequency, the earth's charge. And believe it or not, we actually, you know, we're always walking on, you know, uh, artificial floors and, you know, we have our rubber soles and our shoes and how, how much time do we actually spend grounding ourselves and, and connecting to that earth's frequency? I think that's a simple thing that we could do that could actually discharge a lot of the negative accumulated um, different distortive fields that we're exposed to on a regular basis is just going for a walk and connecting to earth for a few minutes a, a day and maybe dare I even say hug a tree.
Um, <laughs> you know, those kind of things. And other biohacks that come to mind is like, for example, you know, the role of like uh, one of the big trends right now in, in the space is, um, you know, cold therapy um, and the role of cold plunges and cryotherapy. You know, um, I don't know about you, but I don't think you necessarily need to submerge your whole body to get the therapeutic benefit of cold therapy. Um, you know, a simple little biohack that you could do to kind of expose your body to um, additional, you know, kind of um, that, 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 that positive signal is, you know, when at the end of your shower and, you know, I like to shower after I exercise <laughs> is switch it on the shower to cold and give your body a nice little blast of cold, uh, especially on your torso and around your neck and your head to just give your body that kind of little shock that it needs. And believe it or not, um, if you're like me, you're probably going to hyperventilate in, in the shower for a little bit, and it's going to be a huge shock to the nervous system, but it's amazing what it could do for you neurologically and also with how it affects your metabolism with the activation of brown fat and so forth. So that's something that's really interesting. And knowing your chrono rhythm, right? You know, there's as certain people are night owls or morning birds, and, and there's a few different kind of chronotypes out there. It's really important because that's going to influence when you should be exercising, your bedtime, and, you know, when you should be kind of paying attention to, you know, certain other habits. Because dialing in your chronobiology and, and accommodating your routine is going to be very important for, I think, you know, maximizing your overall, you know, productivity and, and, and peak performance and, and, and whatnot. So, you know, I'm more of a early bird. And for me, I try to get to the gym at 5 a.m. in the morning. That for me, that's what works for other individuals. You know, they prioritize going to the gym in the evening time or exercising in the evening time. So really listening and paying attention to your body and looking at your heart rate variability, which is, I don't, I'm sure you guys have heard of the term heart rate variability, but it, it refers to basically the beat to beat variation of your, your heart. And there are different tools that we have out there that can look at your heart rate variability, um, including an aura ring or a mattress or a smart watch, right? Or, you know, there's um, this uh, device from HeartMath that you could click onto your earlobe and it measures your heart rate variability. All really important signals that we could use to monitor and enhance our, our you know, communication within the body. So for example, whenever we enhance our, our beat to beat variability or cardiac coherence with HRV, your body's ability to recover and uh, perform to max potential is optimized. So something to think about in regards to exercise, sleep and recovery is looking at that biometric component of heart rate variability. Um, and I could chat about a million and one other things, right? But, you know, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just close real quickly with the concept of feeding and intermittent fasting. Um, I think, you know, the concept of intermittent fasting, do Dr. Walter Longo has written books about this, and there's some great studies on, you know, this, this concept of the longevity diet and caloric restriction and time-restricted feeding and how that influences vitality is something to pay attention to. Now, one of the big misconceptions, and Dr. Kogan could also speak on this if he, you know, would like, is, you know, whether or not, hey, you know, should you skip breakfast, right? And I think some of the more recent studies showing that it's not good to skip breakfast, and it's good to actually, you know, maybe have break your fast in the morning and then do your little caloric restriction and time restricted feeding throughout the day, um, you know, generally speaking, um, to to make sure that we're not stressing the adrenal system too much. Uh, so, you know, all those things are like little biohacks that I think are important. Your time of exercise, exercise, your light exposure, you know, connecting to earth and being able to discharge, dialing in your intermittent fasting and your caloric intake, um, being, you know, doing little things such as the cold showers that could really help, you know, um, you know, jumpstart the immune system and, and productivity for the day and, and neurological function or simple little things that, that come to mind. And um, yeah, so that's, I, I could go on about a bunch of other things, but uh, you know, something that I've been reflecting on and working on personally in my own, um, you know, kind of um, routine and practice. Well, I, I have a strong feeling there's going to be questions for you, Anil. So if anybody have questions, if you guys don't mind, put them in the chat. Um, 
if somebody is really cannot type or, or there's some other problem, just raise your hand and we'll let you unmute yourself. So, so it looks like there's some questions already coming in. How long should be the duration of cold shower is the first question. <laughs> so I uh, try to get at least two to three minutes myself personally. Um, you know, in my practice here, we were actually getting, um, you know, the cold plunge and a cryo machine as well. So it really just depends for the cold shower. Take your look only um, <laughs> you don't want to take the whole shower cold. Right. So do all the fun things that you need to do. Wash up the areas in, in normal water. And then at the end of the shower, just flip it onto cold. See how long you could kind of tolerate. And I think in the beginning, most people could tolerate only a few seconds, you know, 20, 30, 40 seconds, and then, you know, they tap out. But what you'll notice with long-term practice is that your tolerance is going to build and your duration is going to build over time. And you're going to notice a huge, like, um, you know, kind of improvement with your ability to withstand, you know, longer duration of time of exposure. So it's going to be very personalized, right? But I think the magic number you know, with cold exposure, generally speaking, is around the three minute mark, right? And, um, you know, for me personally, I love going to, you know, these different kind of, um, you know, spas with contrast therapy. You know, I was just at a conference in Reno and they had allegedly one of the best, you know, spas in the country. And all I did was spend time going between hot and cold, hot and cold, hot and cold. And, you know, around my second or third session of the cold plunge, I was in there for minutes and didn't even blink an eye. And it was, it was totally fine. So your tolerance builds with time. Um, okay. Next question was, are you saying eat breakfast? And that's the exception to fasting schedule. I'm saying, Hey, you know, at, at your, your body is fasting at nighttime and does a lot of repair processes and rejuvenation. And I think it's important to make sure that you kind of have breakfast to kind of prime you for the rest of the day. So yes, breaking your fast in the morning with a meal that is going to be nourishing and, and sustainable for you uh, for the day is going to be important. And that's where you could kind of fast for the rest of the day and, or have an earlier dinner. So let's say, Hey, you break your fast around nine, 10 AM. And then maybe you have a dinner or your last meal around, I don't know, um, you know, one or two or three or four that, that kind of, you know, fits the narrative of intermittent fasting with time restricted feeding and potentially caloric restriction, which has been shown to have major therapeutic benefits in regards to promoting longevity signaling pathways. So I hope that answered your question. Um, could you just uh, putting feet into cold water work? You know, the, uh, the, the idea behind um, the cold exposure is to activate brown fat and typically brown fat is more so in the torso region, right? In the abdominal region, right? So I think that's from my understanding, um, you want to make sure you get the vagal nerve right exposure along with the torso um you know uh, putting your feet in cold water i don't know if it'll have the same systemic impact at activating those signals that um you know exposing exposing your other parts of the body would have as well um how long does a fast have to be in order to consider it effective? I think that's very unique and individualized, you know, because you hear about, you know, one day water fast, three day water fast, fasting for five days and so forth. And, you know, fasting is used in so many different religions and cultures and traditions that, you know, it, it's, it's almost built into that, that kind of system. I think we now are trying to use fasting for medical therapeutic um, purposes and, you know, um, from what I've seen and Dr. Kogan can weigh in on this, there was a New England Journal of Medicine study that came out that Dr. Walter Longo helped publish. And the magic number was 18.6 in that one where they showed therapeutic benefits with achieving, um, you know, a decreasing risk for cardiovascular disease, risk for cancer, enhancing the immune system. And it was one of the few times that you hear New England Journal of Medicine mentioning the term longevity, right? So, you know, it's been shown to, to help with, uh, you know, hitting some of those longevity pathways. So I I think it's very individualized because, you know, if somebody has a comorbidity such as diabetes or reactive hypoglycemia or, you know, even hormonal imbalances like menopause, right, doing fasting could actually be very disruptive, right, um, if not done correctly. So it's important to make sure to work with a qualified healthcare provider to know kind of how to dial that in. And if you, you don't have access to it, I think, you know, one of the things that you got to pay attention to is making sure that it's, you know, the fasting, the, the pursuit of the fast isn't causing um, detrimental impacts on your, the way you're, you're going. So 
don't don't push yourself too hard because you're still you know um, inducing some level of stress hormones within this process so it's it's that's a larger conversation um is splashing your face with cold water every morning enough to activate your vagal nerve. So the vagus nerve, you know, has uh, the, one of the main branches here is actually in the neck, right? And it has, you know, branches in the recurrent laryngeal, uh, recurrent uh, laryngeal nerve and uh, of of um, the the neck and the vagus nerve here. And there are other ways of activating the vagus nerve. And one of the simplest ways is again, a, a lot of routines can be done in the shower and for for free is gargling, singing, humming, doing things of that nature actually um, recruits that recurrent laryngeal nerve off of your vagus that it stimulates increased cardiac coherence with heart rate variability. And then, you know, whenever you activate your vagus nerve, you're inducing that parasympathetic rest and digest state of the nervous system, which can have improvements on your digestive system, the overall feeling of well-being and all sorts of things. But believe it or not, yes, the cold water in, you know, on the face, I don't know if it's enough. I haven't seen studies to support that, but I think getting that that exposure, that quick little splash is going to be really important to stimulate the vagus nerve. And also, if you're looking for more vagal nerve input, specifically doing the humming, the singing and the gargling, right? So, you know, in the shower, gargle as long as you can, hum and sing your songs. Uh, for me, more recently, it's been Old MacDonald that I've been, you know, my, my little daughter loves that song and it's ingrained in my brain and I just keep singing Old MacDonald all the time now. It's 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 a lot of fun. Uh, I've been doing cold therapy for several years. Recently, I read that cold therapy after exercise decreases effectiveness of muscle building. Is this true? To avoid muscle loss, take my showers before exercising. So yeah, I have not seen the study about the cold therapy blunting the effectiveness of, um, you know, uh, muscle protein synthesis and, and signaling. Um, I would assume... Hey, you know, the biggest thing with this, it's activating brown fat. Um, it does have some constricting effects because as things get cold, it constricts. When things are warm, it dilates. Um, you know, I would say test, don't guess. If you have the ability to, you know, monitor, you know, strength and compositional change with a home scale, you know, to see if there's anything there. Um, uh, for, for me personally, I do cold therapy and I have not noticed a decrease in the effectiveness of muscle building at all. If anything, it, for me personally, anecdotally, it's helped support. So I'm not too sure. I would love to see that article to see the argument against it, but I wouldn't um, dismiss cold therapy um, out of fear of, um, you know, losing muscle mass, unless we, we were, you know, kind of uh, sarcopenic and have severe muscle atrophy, you know, we're in a catabolic state and breaking down again, you know, this is one of those things that if it's not feeling right for you, don't do it. So Great. yeah, I hope, yeah, that Great. answers everybody's questions. Let me know if there's anything else. I have a, a lot of questions for you. <laughs> it's more than usual. <laughs> So, well, we're, we're running out of time. So I think if anybody still has a question for Anil, if you don't mind, hold it and maybe email it to Janet and myself and we'll pass it on to him. Um, and Anil, do you mind putting your contact information in case somebody wants to reach out to meet with you or set up something? So maybe also link to your practice. And with that, let's uh, transition to our mindfulness part of the today. So how- Thank we you so much, Bye. I yeah, have to run. Thank, I'm going to so drop much. all my contact there. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me know if you need anything. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right. So, Elva, I think you're on and uh, you've done it before. So let's see how that works this this time. Yes. Can everyone hear me? Yep. Looking Great. good. Thumbs up. Good. That was very good. Um, I was sitting here thinking of some laughter yoga things about being in a cold shower. And I think I have something later, a little later about that. I'm going to put my PowerPoint up and um, let's see, share. Can you all see it? Uh, there we go. Yes. Now okay. we can see your, see your screen. Is that good? Yeah. Well, Perfect. kind of. There we go. Perfect. So. Um, I know we did a little bit of laughter yoga, so some of you guys know the information, and we do a little, a little bit of chair yoga to um, this afternoon too. Um, here are some few benefits. Um, laughter yoga does aid in digestion, so that's a good thing that we are going to laugh and help make, move some of these uh, calories throughout our digestive system. 
Um, it relaxes us. It does help strengthen as well as relax the muscles in our belly, our abdomen. Um, it helps expand vessels, send more blood to the extremities and muscles all over the body. It definitely improves our uh, physical appearance, at least 15 uh, facial muscles. So that's, that's a good thing. Um, it also reduces stress hormones. So we are going to laugh, laugh, laugh this afternoon to reduce those stress hormones. It reduces depression. Now, if you have major depression, do see your professional, right? But we want to just, you know, just kind of talk about the depression that sometimes you go, oh, wowsy, wowsy me, that type of depression. Um, it does release this antidepressive um, oxytocin in our body. Calming, it helps with the parasympathetic nervous system. I know Dr. Neil mentioned that earlier today um, about that vagus nerve in there. Laughter brings instant relaxation. And, you know, it also helps strengthens and our socialization, our ability to socialize and build confidence and have relationships within our um, community. So we're going to laugh with one another. So hopefully I see those faces out there on the screen so I could see you laughing and it helps me feel even a bond with you all. Okay. Um, has many positive effects on your mental health as well as your immune system. And most of all, just like, you know, walking outdoors and the cold shower and all that good stuff, it's free. So we're going to do some laughter yoga. Hey, Kathy, I see you and your crew out there. Kathy is there. Kathy, can you hear me? Oh, you guys can't hear, but you can see me, right? Oh, I see Kathy. But anyway, we'll get started with ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. You guys ready? Oh, I see Kathy raving. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Oh, do I have people on? I need there. Hi, Linda. I see Linda. Linda, you can take yourself off the mic if you want. So I can hear you. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Who else wants to uh, play with me this afternoon and laughing? And I need to hear that. I need to hear this, you guys. You can come on camera. Ayla, how are you doing? Thank you, thank you. Uh, who else wants to join me? Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Take your mics off. I need to hear it. I want to hear some ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Come on, we can do it. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Ho, ho, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. We're getting warmed up. We're getting warmed up. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy and your crew. Ho, ho, ha, ha, ha. All right. So the next one we're going to do is when we're feeling really good with ourselves and we're having a great day. And sometimes we don't hear it from our managers or directors, but we're going to say it to ourselves. Very good. Very good. Yay. Very good. Very good. <laughs> yay. I hear you all out there. Very good. Very, very good. Yay. Yay. And you can even pat yourself on the shoulder because you're feeling good about yourself. Come on, that self-love. We got to have that self-love. So very good. Very, very good. good. Yay. Am I seeing you guys doing that? Where's Kathy and her crew? I want to see them do it. Very good. Very good. Yay. That's, it's you guys. I'm talking about y'all. You're looking around, but it's you. Very good. Very good. Yay. That's right. Oh, we're going to do that. So here are some laughter yoga exercises. I know last time we did some, but these are some, you know, little brand new ones. So for example, if you have a mirror, if you have a mirror nearby, if not, that's okay. Or your cell phone, that's all right. You're going to, guess what you're going to do? You're going to look at yourself in the mirror or your cell phone before you do your selfie. And you're going to push up that nose. Just push up that nose and look at yourself. And you can't help but laugh. <laughs> and you're going to look at yourself in the mirror or on your phone and push that <laughs> nose up and laugh. I want to hear some laughter out there. Looking at yourself. Maybe even making the little piggy sound. Snort. There you go, Linda. I see you. I see you, Jane. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> Make those noises. Matter of fact, you could do some of that humming with your nose up. Mm -hmm. Working on that vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hum, hum, hum. There you go, you guys. You got to bring that laughter into your life. You have to see how much you can pull it out. So that's the mirror one. When you look in the mirror in the morning, you can do that little nose thing. You can do hmm hmm hum, hum, working on that vagus nerve, right? Next one, pain in the body. Everybody, that's right, pain in the body. Catalina, are you out there somewhere? There you are, I hope so. But guess what? The pain in the body is this one. You're going to take a finger, your index finger, and you're going to point to where pain is in your body, and you're going to laugh. You guys ready? One, two, three, point to your pain <laughs> and laugh at your pain. <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> some pain. <laughs> Wherever your pain is, I want you to point to it and laugh. Just point to that laugh. Let me see you and let me hear you. I got to hear this laughter. You guys got to warm me up with your laughter. I hear some, but come on, take your mics off. And this is one where you can use your mics and laugh. Give me some laughter, people. I, you don't have to see your face. <laughs> <laughs> laughter is contagious. <laughs> see, somebody's making me laugh. And I'm not even pointing to my pain, but let me laugh with your pain. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Bring that pain into crying. Okay, now we're going to cry laughter. You ready? All right. <laughs> Something's really making you want to cry. Laugh about it. <laughs> Bring the laughter up. Come on, you guys. The more I hear you, the more we're going to laugh. <laughs> laughter yoga i know you guys are getting contagious with this laughter is too much right now i know we talked about cold showers so let's think about cold showers and washing our hair laughter you guys are ready <laughs> Ooh, it's cold but uh <laughs> Woo, this is beneficial. Uh, <laughs> I see you guys. You guys are great. Uh, I'm so cool. <laughs> and also you're stimulating your scalp. That kind of feels good too. Oh, <laughs> and mm, mm, that humming, that humming. Mm, oh, that humming of, oh, and that cold that is refreshing that is refreshing now after you got that cold shower in and you're laughing and you laughed away that pain you're gonna go and you're gonna buy the winning lottery ticket laugh so let's hear this you guys who's there with me laughter with the winning the lottery are you guys ready on a count of three one two three <laughs> Come on, guys. I got to hear this laughter. Come on. This is laughter. There you go, Jane. There you go. I won. I won. Laughter, yo. Hear some laughters out there. Where's everybody? Oh, you guys, are, your sides are hurting. I see it. I see you guys laughing, but I don't hear you. Maybe your mics are off. Now that you won that lottery and you laughed your way to get the money, you're going to take a trip. You guys ready? You're going to take a trip with this money. And guess what? You get to the airport and we all have done this or maybe, maybe not. Been late at the airport. We missed the plane. We just missed the plane and we're going to laugh about it because we got so much money. We can take the next flight out. So you guys ready? Linda, you ready? <laughs> One, two, three. We missed the plane. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I am a millionaire and I missed the plane. Matter of fact, 
I'm a multi-millionaire and I missed the plane. Oh, oh, oh. You people, I don't care. Oh, oh. Laugh. There you go. We won the lottery. We missed the plane. We don't care. Now we're going to get on our cell phone and we're going to be on our phone to tell our family that we're about to go somewhere really nice. And maybe people are talking to us and we're on our phone and I'm not listening to you laughter. You guys ready? I'm listening to you. Good, Linda. You got it, Linda. I see you, Jane. I see you, Kathy crew out there laughing. I, I see you. I, that's right. I, oh, what? Yeah, I won the lottery. Oh, don't talk to me. I'm not listening. Since we're not listening, guess what? Let's add in one of the humming things that's good for our vagus, right? Let's put our fingers in our ears and laugh and hum. <laughs> very good, very good, very good, yay! Very good, very good, yay. Very good, very good, very good, yay. You guys catch on fast. I like that. Now, you're on the plane and we're saying aloha, aloha, because we're on the plane and we're going to enjoy this trip. You guys ready to take this trip with us? Imaginary trip, of course. But we can do it. And hey, who knows? A couple of days you can be on a trip. So on the count of three, we're going to say aloha. You ready, guys? One, two, three. Aloha. 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 I see Jane even doing an aloha. Grass dance. Aloha. Aloha. Let's see what Kathy's crew is doing. Are they doing that, Kathy crew? Are you out there going aloha? There you go. Yes. Thank you. Aloha. Very good. Very good. Yay. Now, moving on. Guess what we're going to do? Have a little treat for you guys. We're gonna do a little yoga chair, chair yoga, I mean. And um, I do want to show you guys my laughter yoga mat. You know, we have to have a, a mat for regular yoga or you know, standing yoga. Here's my laughter yoga mat. It's a napkin, and that's the ha ha ha. You guys yeah. like that? I know. I know. I'm a little corny, but hey, you gotta be when you do laughter yoga. This is my mat. <laughs> so now chair yoga first thing i gotta come down now because we're about to do chair yoga you gotta be very very mindful when you do chair yoga everyone in their chairs i want you to get a chair preferably with no arms okay but if you have arms just be careful when you lift your arms up but just be mindful of your arms and your chair Take a couple deep breaths in and out. If you need a little water, like I do, take drink some water. That was good, you guys. You guys really had me laughing. I mean, laughter is wonderful. So we're gonna shift to the chair yoga in our chairs. Sit up straight. Nice and tall if you can, okay? You know your body. Now we're going to have focus attention, bring our attention onto our breath. Notice the inhalation as well as the exhalation. After the laughter, your heart rate may be up a little bit, right? So we just kind of get mindful of that, get centered.
And as we get centered, I want you to always remember to breathe. So what we're going to do is just some basic things. We're going to we're gonna just focus on our head and our neck. You know, since we talked about the vagus nerve, we want to do that. So the first thing I want you to do is to let's grab a little bit out and up as you inhale. Grab a little bit of great energy from the source above. Right? The energy from the sun. Collect it in your hands. And then just bring it in to your heart. And then while you bring it into your heart, you just set your intention for this afternoon or your day or morning, whenever you do this. And that intention may be, I am comfortable today. I am lovable. I am showing compassion. And just place it in your heart. So we're going to start and work with our face. The first thing we're going to do is just kind of tilt to the right. Just tilt your ear to your shoulder as you inhale and exhale. Notice that stretch right here on the left side, right? Bring it back to center. Drop that ear, your left ear to your left side. Notice any difference. Sometimes there's a difference on our sides. Bringing it back to center. Now we're going to drop it back to the right. Coming back to the center. Again, please continue to breathe in and out throughout this practice. Breathing in and exhaling out to the left side. Again, noticing any difference. Bring it back to center. And you can take your right hand and just gently put it on the top of your head. And when you drop it to the right side, just a little bit of a tug there, gentle though, to get it more of a stretch. Breathing in and breathing out, noticing how that feels. Coming back to center. Now taking your left hand, just a little bit on top of your head and bringing it to your left side. Noticing that, noticing how it feels inside, right? It feels nice. Bringing it back to center. Now you're going to turn your head as if someone called your name over to your right. Just gentle, be easy and gentle, looking over your shoulder, noticing that stretch, breathing in and out, bringing it back to center. Now we're going to go to the left as if someone called over from the left, noticing that, and bringing it back to center. One more time, right? Bring it back to center. Very good. Now to left. Center. Now we're going to use the chair. So we're going to do the same thing to the right, but this time we're going to turn the torso. Bring your arm over the back of the chair if you have that high chair. Holding with your right hand on the back of the chair. Twisting the torso, breathing in and out. Maybe your left hand is on your thigh or on the chair, the seat of the chair, the side of the chair. And notice that twist. Breathing in and out. Gentle. Just be gentle with your body. Waking the spine. Slowly come back to center. Very good. And now we're going to do that on the left side, the same thing, bringing that left arm over to the back of the chair, maybe the right hand on the thigh or the seat of the chair, the side of the chair, breathing in and out, very good. And notice any difference in this twist. Slowly bring it back to center. Another thing we're going to do is like, I don't know, bringing your shoulders up like, I don't know, tight, and then bringing them down, dropping them down. Very good. Bring it up. I don't know. And then bring it down. Very good. Notice that difference. It feels really good. Bringing it up tight. It's like the muscle response. And then bringing it down to relax. Very good. And then we could do a little couple of cat cows to keep it into the spine, lifting that chest out, up and out, the chin up, 
the dropping the chin down and arching the back. That's the cat. And the cow, the chin up, leading with the chin, heart, dropping those shoulders from the ears. And then arching that back, the spine, dropping the head and the chin. Very good. Now I'm going to lead you guys into a short body scan. You know, five minutes look like time, maybe a couple minutes here. And so we're going to get into a very comfortable position again. Always be comfortable. Always be gentle with yourself. And I want you all to close your eyes. And as you close your eyes, feet flat on the floor if you can to ground. And if your shoes are off, that's even great. And socks are off, just grounding. And later on, maybe you take that sit outside with your feet in the grass or close to the earth if you can. But for now, we're just going to sit. Be mindful of the moment. I'm going to invite you to bring your awareness into the soles of your feet. Connecting. Notice the coolness, the warmth on your feet. No judgment, just awareness. And then slowly move that awareness into your legs, be it your lower legs, your knees, and your thighs. Notice how your thighs are sitting in a chair, taking a moment to show gratitude for the chair that you have. Showing gratitude to the chair for supporting you in this moment. Continue to breathe in and out. And slowly bring that awareness from the thighs, up the hips, and slowly up the back. Just noticing that, your torso, up the belly, up to the chest, front and back. And continue to breathe in and out. No judgment, just awareness of this moment. And slowly bring the scan into your arms, top of the arms, down your elbows, and down into your palms, your hands, and fingers, and thumbs. Again, showing a sense of appreciation and gratitude for our body, even though it may be a vessel with a little aches and pains and illness here and there now and then, but showing the body a sense of gratitude. Maybe even noticing the heart rate has come down from the laughter yoga. And slowly bring that awareness into the neck, throat, and into the face, your jawline, your mouth, your nose and nostrils, noticing the coolness as you inhale and notice the warmth as you exhale, and then notice the sounds around you. With your eyes closed, just notice what you notice behind the eyelids. Maybe it's nothing at all. Maybe it's light. Maybe it's colors or sensations. It just give us deep sense of gratitude for the five senses that we're aware of. The taste, the hearing, the touch, the sounds, the sights, right? Continue to breathe in and slowly exhale out. No judgment, just awareness. And slowly bring that awareness to the top of the head and hear. Just imagine a beautiful, gentle light, maybe a golden light. It's beaming over our bodies. And this beautiful light is sending energy, love and care, and self-worth and healing energy to each and every one of you. Continue to breathe in and out. 
and then slowly at the count of three, we bring our awareness back into our space. One, two, and three. And then I bring my hands to gather to say namaste to each and every one of you. The light in me sees the light in each of you. And uh, I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me with this. And I know we had a lot there, but sometimes, you know, a lot can come in small packages. Well, we appreciate uh. every time you come on here with us and help us remember the healing um, properties of laughter. Yes, yes. Thank you all. And I want to thank Kathy and her crew and everybody participating in the laughter. I, I truly, really appreciate that. Linda, Ilea, La, uh, Jane, everybody. I, I Everybody was laughing. I'm sure they were laughing, but they had their mics off. And I want to wish the fathers out there, the fathers who are you know there for the children, you know, uh, you may not be biological fathers, but I just want to send that out to each and every one of you and have a great um, Father's Day. Misha, do you have anything to say to wrap it up? Thank you, Elvis, so much. And just a reminder, this is now become, going to become a regular occurrence. So if there is a particular specific feedback, let us know. Otherwise, I will do the fatty acids next week. And in fact, I will do more on fatty acids. So We'll be talking about omega threes, omega six, C fifteen, and other fatty acids. So tune in, um, and I will. Uh, Elisa, did she leave? I hope she left, or maybe not. Or she's not. She didn't leave. Oops. Well, I will promise. I, I didn't want to promise her since I keep screwing this one up. It is a complex analysis, and I'm short on time. But I will really do an effort to get ready for that study because I think it is important. So with that. Um, and I do hope we find somebody for mind body because you don't want to see me for the whole hour. It's boring. <laughs> we need somebody. It's never boring. Come on, man. All right, fine. You will be doing mind body. No. I'm oh, just... sure. Okay. All right. Well, no. If you're ready, let's let's have Janet do a mind body. I think she'll be better than me anyway. Okay. She's heading. She's shaking her head. No. Well, enjoy the weather. I don't know what's weather. How how hot is this in DC? It's pretty Are hot. You? All right. Well, I'll see everybody next week. Enjoy the weekend. Stay Take safe. Take care. And if you're not in New York, please mask up in public transit. We don't want you to catch the whole. <laughs> if you're in New York, uh, please send me a message. I would like to see this. And potentially, I, I if I can raise a hell, I will. But it sounds ridiculous that, that somehow they can mandate uh, disallowing people to wear masks. It's, it sounds completely like inappropriate. So I don't know what... Um, yeah, I, I want to look into this before I comment on that because I, I want to see legalities of that and also just to see if I can do something. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.